Billy Gumbo Cause tonight I'm gonna see Mama Shazamio Pick your tough, fill fruit jar and be gay Son of a gun, we'll have big fun on the bio People will ask me what I call myself. Am I a stuntman? Am I a comedian? Am I an author, an actor? And you know what I am? I'm an attention whore. Something gothic is an aesthetic which understands the world to be dying. It celebrates crucifixes, fading wallpaper, one-room schoolhouses and images of Jesus Christ. Something gothic is the sweat dripping from Robert Patterson's brow and the devil all the time. The deranged sister of cottagecore, a Lipson girl impaled in a white picket fence. It is a dialect between the grotesque and American mythology. Something gothic is unaccommodating to consumerism in a way that aesthetics or cores on the internet are not. As we enter into a huge economic slump, the desire to build your own identity through Amazon shop fronts on TikTok has been reviled. In neoliberalism, large amounts of money are funneled into convincing people that identity is about consumer choice. Still, it's much harder to marketize the object. Read the full essay, Daughters of Cain, Sharp Objects, and How the Recession Gave Rise to the Southern Gothic Now on polyesterzine.com. Let's talk about Southern Gothic. If you've got a similar algorithm to me, Southern Gothic is an aesthetic that is everywhere on my TikTok and Pinterest. Drawing most of its inspiration from the music of Ethel Kane, images of animal skulls emerging from Louisiana swamps, dilapidated mansions, and austere churches saturate my feed. While this can be swept into the umbrella of fleeting TikTok trends, I want to discuss this specific aesthetic and look into its deep and rich history to see how I think it can actually be a much more long-lasting and meaningful trend and be a bigger part of our culture. In 2021, the hashtag Southern Gothic had 9 million views. As of the 16th of August 2023, it had 121.2 million. With the rise in popularity of the music of Ethel Kane, whose relevance is highlighted by the rise in Christian nationalism, let's look at the history of Southern Gothic and what the aesthetic is today. So its main kind of origins are as a literary movement. So starting in the late 1800s, we see literature that takes its themes from the Romantic and Gothic movement in British literature. And its themes include isolation, marginalization, crime, violence, destitution, decay, oppression, and discrimination. Literature is often filled with black and queer characters. It has a real fascination with outsiders from the social norm. This is something that's relevant to the aesthetic of the modern day, as I would argue that the majority of the people who are engaging on TikTok or whatever with the like trend are likely to be queer people who certainly do not fit into the white heteronormative Christian society. From the early 1800s to the modern day, Southern Gothic explores the ideal of the American pastoral dream and how it rests on foundations of mass repression. So let's turn to the fashion of the early 1800s. According to the Fashion Institute of Technology in NYC, the Romantic movement, which impacted all aspects of culture and society, was a rejection of 18th century enlightenment ideals of logic and reason. I guess in this sense, it makes sense that so much of its focus is on the role of the preacher. This is the person who embodies this rejection of enlightenment ideals and logic. Looking more closely at the fashion trends, fashion of the 1820s transformed from the kind of more neoclassical influences of the Regency period towards the Gothic and Romantic styles. Skirts began to be flared, sleeves were puffed at the shoulder, and the waistline dropped. Discussing the fashion trend that the FIT goes on to say, By the 1820s, it was in full swing, emphasizing imagination, emotion, individualism, and a fascination with the past. This is where we get a lot of the kind of influences of the high-necked white dresses, or black, with like lace embellishments. So let's 
skip ahead towards its recent history, and although there have been lots of iterations of Gothic over the years, I went on to look more specifically at the regional Gothic trend of 2010's Tumblr. So like, I wasn't someone who was ever actually on Tumblr, I don't know why my friends were all on it, I just wasn't, so I don't pretend to remember this trend, but from what I can tell from the internet, you had people who would post like, bullet pointed stories alongside images with like a gothic theme but a specific geographical region. It could be Southern California, it could be the Appalachian Mountains, but it often centered on the southern states of the US. And it would also have similar imagery of evangelical billboards with messages of fear or abandoned gas stations. Also in the 2010s, in 2013, American Horror Story released its third season, Coven. I love this season. In my mind, this is the like go-to for 2010s Southern Gothic. It's set in New Orleans. The main characters, they're all like descendants of Salem witches, often dressed in black, and they live in this big white old mansion. You've also got like Misty Day hanging around in the swamps of Louisiana, and you've even got Stevie Nicks coming in, head to toe in black, singing Seven Wonders. Also what's interesting with this season was a lot of the main flashbacks and its reference points in history was 18. 34, which is the height of where you've got this gothic historical trend in fashion. If you look at the dresses and the clothes they all wear in these flashbacks, it's where we see a lot of our influences coming from. AHS Coven digs up the memory and legacy of 1830s America. It forces it down your throat in an unpalatable retelling of a grotesque reality. Southern Gothic media and art tears down the facade of what lurks from the dark corners of the internet to the high offices of power. On a similar theme, we can also look at Beyonce's 2016 music video for Formation. It has a lot of the similar aesthetics. You've got the outfit she wears, you've got like the high necked white dress with the parasol. And then we can also see the like full blackout, but with the like wide brimmed hat and the chunky silver jewelry, I think it's really interesting because that is something that like, I and everyone is obsessed with wearing right now. And it's really cool to see on her in this setting. Beyonce's Formation shows a certain pride in the South. Not in the way textbooks of the United Daughters of the Confederacy will have it. Of course not. We're talking about Southern Gothic. She demands you confront the black experience rather than file it to a footnote in history. I did not come to play with you hoes. <laughs> While I was researching this, I finally got around to watching Devil All The Time, the 2020 film on Netflix. And it's mad that I've not watched this already because it's got Tom Holland in it. And when I was younger, I had such a crush on Tom Holland. Uh, but I finally got around to watching it and I loved it. It's heavy on the themes of religious fear and exploitation. Dark lighting, rotting wood, stained curtains and looming crosses create this world in which the preacher's word is law, in which lives are dictated by fear and anger. So what does all this mean for the trend of the modern day? Archie Hamilton writes for Varsity, If the Southern Gothic seeks to create a grotesque of its country, then America's present is too real, too potent, too absurd, too bloody to caricature. Despot presidents, followers with cultish devotion and an unabashed pride in their racism, are too surreal even by the standards of the genre. In short, it is too horrific even for the horrors of Gothic. Southern Gothic exposes this religious system that's used to perpetuate violence and repression. With the rise of Christian nationalism and the mechanisms of fear used to attack trans people for political gain, it's no surprise that Southern Gothic has once again found itself a home with disillusioned young queer people who find themselves under attack and with a very valid sense of fear. Southern Gothic is a world in which the character of Ethel Kane exists, a world full of violence and religious fear. When Ethel Kane talks about showing love in black and blue, she doesn't just talk about a romantic lover, so too the religious institutions that use love as an excuse for violence. My point is that this genre ignites conversation, one in which queer people are able to express this sense of fear with its dark themes, in which they can force society to be confronted by the horrors of this fear and hatred. This is all best done dressed up in white lace under a dusty American flag. <laughs> <laughs> 